Howdy folks, it's Digital Hunting Gear Guy, and these are the Vortex Diamondback 10 Magnification 42 uh, uh, Objective, or 10 by 42 if you want to say that. Uh, these are the HD versions, so they've got the better glass in them, and they're pretty compact, pretty decently compact. I would say that these are like a medium size uh, set of binoculars, and this, this size is, and magnification is super typical for hunting. So uh, that's why I purchased these. Uh, I have, my oldest son was, uh, was getting into hunting this year, and I needed to be able to spot and not necessarily shoot. So I figured I'd get a, a decent set of binoculars at an affordable price. These things are right around 300, 350, uh, and somewhere in there. Um, in terms of the camo pattern, this is something that Cabela's offers. The, normally they come in like a green uh, style. Um, normally they also come with some, like something called a glass pack, which is a, a kind of like a pouch that sits on your chest and makes it very easy to pull your binos out and take a look at whatever uh, you might need to take a look at. Whereas these ones came with uh, a case, a, a very big case for, uh, uh, compared to the size of the binoculars. Uh, they're quite large. I'd imagine they use this case for other purposes for other binoculars that are a little bit bigger because these ones are, are um, they got a lot of room in there, I guess I could say. Now, one of the unfortunate things about doing a product review on binoculars is that uh, the big difference between a cheap set of binoculars and a decent set of binoculars and a very expensive set of binoculars is the optical quality. And that's something that's kind of hard to show on video. So uh, even I, I tried setting up a tripod with one of those screw in things that puts your phone on the eyepiece and uh, it was really tough, even at 4K, to tell the difference between this and like a really crappy set of binoculars. Whereas to my eye, uh, <laughs> it makes a huge difference. So when it comes to the optical quality, it's kind of hard to uh, it's kind of hard to show you guys the difference between this and a, a cheaper or more expensive set of binoculars. But um, my my impression was uh, the optical quality was uh, was very good. And I personally, I think like the the 10 by 42s, this packaging is very very popular for a good reason 10 magnification is enough magnification to actually do something so where your naked eye can't like out resolve the set of binoculars and 42 for the objective it delivers enough light into your eyes that you can actually uh see stuff in at, at the dusk uh so i like for example i've got a 10 by oh boy what is it 36 24 i have a crappy little monocular also from vortex called a solo and it doesn't deliver enough light um in the dying light so it's it's not good enough at dusk whereas these guys 10 magnification, 42 objective, definitely do deliver enough light uh, to use for hunting. Uh, the other thing that you get when uh, when buying a more expensive set of binoculars is different uh, uh, optical coatings. Uh, and again, that's also difficult to show on video and show you the difference between these and, and some other ones. I did find when I was aiming towards where the sun was, aiming, oh, <laughs> looking towards where the, where the sun was, uh, I did get a little bit of uh, uh, kind of like bright washout uh, in these, um, which... I don't really care because for the kind of thing I'm going to be doing this with, uh, doing the, with this uh, hunting, and maybe birding if I go out for a hike, uh, that's fine. I'm not going to be aiming at the sun 99% uh, of the time, so uh, who cares? So moral of the story: the optical quality on this thing fantastic compared to my other crappier uh, binoculars. I have some older ones that I, I think I paid 150 or 200 dollars for some Bushnells, mind you, uh, 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, and one thing that's changed in the last 10 or 15 years is that there's a lot more value priced binoculars out there that uh, still that deliver like really, really good uh, optical quality for the price. Again, for the price, I've, I've, I've looked through some thousand dollar binoculars and they are nicer, like the, the optical quality is better. Um, but is it that much better? And will you be able to see whether that deer has oh, however many points on his antlers on this that you were on a more expensive pair versus this? I don't think so. Maybe if you're hunting like really, really, really far or you're really into the dusk and going far. But I found this was fantastic for uh, spotting e like way before legal light. I was able to use these to see what was in the field and uh, to see whether I could see any deer or anything like that. So these were very good for that where my naked eye could, I, I couldn't see or I couldn't really resolve. I could see some motion, but I couldn't really see what it was. And just looking through these was excellent at being able to 
pull in some extra light and be able to see uh, what kind of deer I was looking at and how many of them there were and uh, and what they were doing and how they were acting. Now, in terms of accessories with this set of binoculars, there's a couple things you get. You get this big case. It's big. It's kind of flexible, but kind of hard at the same time. I prefer a hard case because a lot of the times what I'm doing with my binoculars is throwing it in a bin with other stuff I'm taking out to the range. These are strong enough. I would have to throw something real heavy on these things to crush them. And even then... Uh, there's not really anything to crush underneath here. So this is decent enough protection. It is a little bit big. I would like to see something uh, not quite as tall because it's a little bit larger than I think I would need. Uh, it comes with an instruction manual, which, okay, who cares? It comes with a little microfiber cloth. Um, it came with a strap for that, for this case, which I don't use at all because uh, I just don't see the need to. Like if I go out... Um, uh, like, let's say I was going to go out birding or hunting with this thing, I would use the strap for it because this strap just goes on your neck and uh, and holds the binos and it's fine. And a glass pack would be a little bit nicer because those typically have a, a strap that goes around the chest as well and they hold them firmly there. They don't move around. I'm not like doing any extreme hiking though when I go hunting. I'm, I'm typically hiking out to my uh, hunting spot and sitting for a while. So having them move around on my chest is fine. Uh, I think this strap is a little bit cheap and but the parts that matter where it goes on your neck it's got a nice neoprene non uh, slip kind of a kind of a coating on there and it was fine i didn't feel it hurting my neck or anything like that it uh, it goes on by like threading onto the binos which i'll show in a close-up here in just a minute uh in terms of the binoculars themselves they've got these flap open uh uh covers on the front here. I didn't really like these because when it gets cold, they don't want to hold open. They just kind of hang there uh, when it's really cold and you look through it and you're like, man, why is it, what, what's going on with my view? It's because you actually have to pull these down. So sometimes I felt I had to uh, actually hold them down uh, to, uh, to be able to see through them. The back is this, uh, this little articulated uh, unit here and normally like that would be threaded through your uh, your strap so that would retain these guys and you could just flip them off to the side and it would hang there uh, on the uh, on the binoculars themselves we've got a nice big focus uh, uh, knob up here uh, we've got our uh, individual um, uh, what do you call it where you focus just one eye cup and then try to match it with the other that doohickey is right here and then we've got some twist up eye cups which I really like I, I really prefer to uh, use the twist up eye cups because it makes it very easy to just jam onto your head and get them in the, in the right spot and not have to like hold them off. If you're wearing glasses, you won't be able to do that. Get some laser eye surgery like I did. And then you don't have to worry about like fogging glasses and that kind of thing. And you can just jam your, your binos right on your face. Now, one other cool thing is, I don't know if you guys realize this, but in between this little cover here is a little screw hole. Now, the idea with that is that you would use it with an adapter, and that adapter would hold your binos and then allow you to attach a camera tripod to the bottom of it. So you can tripod mount your binos. So this guy uh, goes in there, and then you screw it into place, and then this would hold your binoculars nice and steady. Uh, if you were to use this at a range or if you were uh, birding really far, that would be a handy way to hold your binoculars. Because again, your vision is kind of based on movement. So if you can hold the binoculars steady and put them in a tripod and then just like stand off from the binoculars so that you're not touching them, they're on a tripod, they're super, super steady, uh, you will find it easier to track uh, animals and you'll be able to, it will almost look clearer than, uh, than just holding them freehand. Just in case there's anyone watching us who <laughs> wants to know how to thread their uh, binocular strap in, I've got that strap facing down. I've got the keeper above it. I'm going to take that evenly. I'm going to pass it up through the bottom. And then I got to get it through this eye cup because this is what's going to retain that, uh, that cover on the front. Get in there. And get that guy up. I'm just going to turn it down here just so you can more easily see what's going on. And then I've got to get it through here. Try to keep your, uh, uh, your straps nice and even when you're doing this. And then I'm going to get it through this middle one. Through this middle H buckle. And then down through the other side. I'm kind of cheating here just to get it through. And if I want to, I can hold that extra bit of strap with this little keeper. Just to hang on to it and keep it out of the way. Keeping it nice and straight. I don't want any twists in this thing. We're going to do the other side. 
And again, I'm going to come in through the bottom. Now this one over here has a split in it, so you can just uh, get it in like that if you if you want to, or you don't actually have to uh, retain on this side. I opted not to, and I'll show you why in a minute. Make sure your straps are nice and straight. Get it through that H buckle, and then press in from the other side. Finally, make sure that the straps are even and that that bit that you're at least going to get your neck in the middle of this bit at the back. Now with the straps on, I can just pull this cup and kind of flip it off and those uh, those covers come off very easily. So that's why I didn't opt to, uh, to thread them into the side because they don't really matter. And that's just the easy way to pull them off and uh, and use these binos. So why did I choose this, these specific binoculars? Well, one was the, the format 10 by 42, I think is, is a, a really practical uh, way to go with, uh, with, with binoculars. So that's reason one why I went with this size and format. It's, uh, it's reasonably compact, not really compact enough to get into a pocket, but compact enough that if it's hanging off your chest, it's not really taking up a lot of space. Uh, in terms of brand, so like there's a lot of competition for this size and this price point. Within this size and price point, you've got the Bushnell Engage, you've got the Nikon Pro Staff 7s, uh, the Loophold Marksman, and I think even Cabela's has like uh, their intensity brand that, uh, that competes with this. Um, I went with Vortex because optical quality wise, like I'm not going to buy all four of those binoculars and see which one's got the best optics on it. They're probably pretty similar when I was looking at, uh, looking at them at the store. Uh, they were similar. And uh, I think that the reason why, again, I went with Vortex is they've got a lifetime warranty and it's one of those no questions asked uh, style warranties. So that's really my primary reason why I went with these binoculars. Um, because if they have any problems, I can just send them back. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, super practical binoculars uh, for hunting and that kind of thing. Thanks for watching.